Hello, fellow Rosarians. If you're like me, you're starting to think about fall and pumpkins, and I'm tired of looking at these planners. They are so tired from the summer. So we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, the plants that are in here right now and start getting ready for our fall planters. What I wanted to share with you today is how to make an obelisk. The great thing about making this yourself is that you can tailor it to the size of the pot you need. It folds up almost flat for storage and you can just hang it on a wall. And then when you're ready, you go ahead and pop it into shape. Um, you spray it up with some Rust-Oleum every year to give it a nice sheen and protect it. What I wanna do first before I show you how to make this little beauty is let's go ahead and get these pots cleaned out of everything that are my annuals. I'll be back in a second. So what did I save here? I pulled out the Pentas, it still looked pretty, so I'm gonna throw that in a pot for a little bit. And I also saved the ivy. I really love the variegated ivy and it'll be able to make it through the winter. So I'm gonna snip off where it's gotten a little bit long and maybe I'll try to propagate that. Okay, so now that we've got it all cleaned up, I'm going to go ahead and put a sealer on them real quick. So what I used is Thompson's water sealer. If you've got concrete, it's gonna break down, but it's gonna take 20 to 25 years. So every year, at least once, you should go ahead and spray and make sure you're using a clear. And if you can't find clear, make sure it's matte because I've heard stories about people who accidentally use um, a high gloss and it really changes the look of uh, the concrete, not in a good way. Okay, so now we have chopped it off with some soil. We have um, added our sealer. Let me go ahead and use the leaf blower real quick, give it a final little cleanup, and then we'll put the obelisk on. So what I also have is red dogwood branches. You could use any kind of branches though and just spray paint them the color that you want. So I'm thinking for fall, it could be really fun to do these sparkly black and I'm gonna add pumpkins. And then as soon as the winter season is here, do them in a bright red. I'm gonna go and scavenge into the lot next to me and find some fun greenery to add. So let's go ahead and get started and let me show you how to make an obelisk. So we're here in my garage, so ignore the echo. Um, I am going to put up on the screen first, um, real quick for you to see what the supplies are that we need. I'm going to put as many of these things into my Amazon store in case you need them, but you're gonna to wanna to pick a cabinet pole. And I got this directly from, I think I came from Lowe's, but uh, there's a really great one on Amazon that I've also gotten before that looks like, I think they call it a, a bird's nest. You're gonna need a hammer. You're gonna need your landscape ties to secure this down. You're gonna need machine screws that are number eight 32 by one and a quarter, your measuring tape, a nail, one nail, ratchet, a screwdriver, steel strapping, and tin snips. Okay, so let's talk real quick about the strapping. It comes only in a 200 foot section that I've seen. This is three quarters of an inch. So the great thing about this is it's $48, but you get to make 11 obelisks with that much length. So let's go ahead and get started. And what I've done is I have a board here that I need to be able to nail through uh, the strapping. So I have marked on here 54 inches. And I know 54 inches because I've made these obelisks before. My planter was 24 inches wide as a reference. So as you're thinking about your planter at home, 
24 inches needs 54 inches of strapping. So what we're gonna do is use our tin snips. Where are my tin snips? Okay, tin snips. And then I want you to get your strapping and be careful, it can get sharp. So um, here's my mark here for 54 inches. I'm gonna go ahead and um, cut my strapping now and I need four lengths of 54 inches. Okay, there's one. One more. Can I make it on this box? Yes. <laughs> okay. Done. We're done with the strapping. So now what we need to do is measure the center point. So if we have a 54 inch length, we know that the center is going to be 27. So we are now going to mark 27. And this is where the center point is that we're gonna put a screw and connect them all. So I'm just using a, a nail to mark this, but you could certainly use a pencil. Last one. Okay, so now that I've marked the centers, what we're going to do is use the nail to pierce through and you wanna make sure that you go through at least until it sticks to the wood so that then you know that your screw will go through but we will check them when we're done. And then you wiggle it out just for reference. If we take now this uh, machine screw, it will go all the way through. So we're gonna to wanna to do that now that was the center. We want to go about a half inch from each edge and make sure that if you're piercing on this side, that you pierce on the same side for all of the nails that you're putting through. So be careful of where you've pierced it because if your hands um, roll over that, you could cut yourself. So you probably want to be wearing gloves. Okay, so we are finished now piercing through all of these. So I know, I've done this before, that I have to put three of these nuts now on this machine screw. So, and that fills the space uh, for that cabinet pole. If you were just going to use this machine screw and it was going on a cabinet, that wood will fill that space. But here, because the strapping is fairly thin, we need uh, those nuts to do that for us. So I am putting three of them on here and I have wound them all the way down. And now I'm going to start going through the center section of each of these straps. And we want the straps, the pierced portion, all going in the same direction. We need to find our, <laughs> I haven't taken it out of the package yet. We're going to get our cabinet pole now and we're going to put it on top of this. Okay, so let's put our cabinet pole here and I'm just going to hold it on the bottom where those um, nuts are and I'm going to make it, I wouldn't go all the way tight because we're still trying to piece it together. So now what I want you to do is we're done with the wood, we can move that out of the way. I want you to open up the straps now on this. So we've got 
this now um hopefully you can that's kind of hard to see isn't it black on gray uh, but it's all laid out so what we need to do now is take a machine screw and we want to start um, if we take the bottom most strap and you can see how the strap runs through uh, both sides so take both of those straps that are on the bottom and one of them the first one you're going to put it through the bottom of all of them it gets easier as you do this so what i do now is i rest the whole thing starting that orb shape but i want you to take the next strap that's in line next to the strap that we just made into a complete circle and by choosing the next strap um, that is closest to that one it allows it to close easier so you're going to take each strap with its pair or its mate on the other side and we're just going in order of which one is next until we choose the last strap which is right here on top We can see that orb coming together. So now that I have everybody sitting on this machine screw, I'm going to take my nut and let's go ahead and start securing it. I can hand tighten it. And then what you do is you grab your ratchet and your Phillips and you put the ratchet on the inside to hold that in place for you while you put the Phillips on the outside to tighten that. So let's give it a couple of turns here and tighten it up. I'm gonna hand tighten this one here. Okay. So you can see that this folds up nicely. We can open it into the shape that we want, fan those out. Our knob looks so pretty here and you can choose any decorative knob you want. And then when you're ready to put it into your planter, you're going to want eight landscape ties to just simply tie these down. So I hope you can see that is really easy. In 15 minutes, I was able to crank out one of these obelisks. So I hope that that gives you the confidence that you don't need to go spend lots of money on Etsy or wherever. You can make your own and it'll be tailored to the exact size that you need. You just need to adjust it accordingly for that width and you'll save so much money and you can spend that on roses. So thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.